right, guys, we're live for the FFL Rush role play call. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We got uh, Julia unmuted right now. She's been a new agent that just started with us. And this week, she helped protect five families, which feels pretty great. Now, we average make about $1,000 per family we help. So, you know, that's some good money in your pocket right there. So as far as your experience goes, um, helping those five families, and last week, uh, I think you posted something in the group chat that said, you know, hey, it works. I'm following the system, right? But I think for a lot of us, we go, what is the system? What are you talking about? So for you, what do you think is the system that people should follow? And what do you mean by that? Well, I think you should definitely watch videos. You learn from the videos for sure. And you just really buy the leads. I know I was scared when I first started, thought, oh my goodness, am I going to waste this kind of money? These people aren't going to end. What am I going to do? And I just watched so many videos that said, do the system, follow the system, buy those leads. So I buy them every week and I follow through. Nice. So, so for me, the system would be, especially if you're brand new, um, I see a lot of new agents that come into this and they do two things. One, you know, Corey can, can admit to this, but <laughs> they think that they just keep studying and studying and studying and they never start, right? Like, oh, uh, I just, I just yeah. watch videos all the time, but they're never mm -hmm. doing anything, right? Or you have some people that start and they're like, oh, all I'm going to do is just buy some leads and call them, but they spent like an hour practicing their script, right? So for me, I think if you guys are brand new, it needs to be about a 50-50 split um, between the two, right? You should be spending about half of your time, 20 hours a week, um, watching videos and studying, and then half your time actually dialing in and, um, you know, dialing and actually trying to help some families out. So, but another mistake that people make is they think that just watching videos is going to make you good, right? So I think you split that up again and go, okay, 10 hours is going to be watching some videos and, and taking some notes, you know, not just like watching a video while you're cooking dinner, because you're not going to be paying attention to it, right? Or watching, or watching a video while you're at the gym, I mean, I do that, but I've been doing this for 11 years, so I, I can retain the information a little bit better. But I, I sometimes stop and pull out my phone and take some notes down if I hear something really good. But watching with intent, your next 10 hours is now reviewing your notes and getting good at it, right? So if you, if you heard a really good uh, sentence or a rebuttal or something that you wrote down, now's your chance, the next 10 hours to be practicing it and reading it out loud pretending like that person said that objection to you and you're responding and you're getting faster at it, memorizing it. You're going in your backyard or maybe walk around your living room and you're just reading your script over and over again, trying to memorize it, recording yourself and listening it back and go, I don't know, it doesn't sound like me. I probably hang up on myself too, right? This is what I mean by the other part of studying. It's not just studying, but studying with intent. Now, now we're memorizing our scripts. We're, we're, we're coming back and seeing how we sound. Maybe you're sending me guys a uh, recording of you. Uh, send me, send it over and go, hey, Ryan, what do you think? And then I can listen to it um, when I got some time and, and break down each section and go, hey, you know, that part I can see where, where you might have messed up a little bit. Another idea might be uh, when you're on a live call, you know, record your, in, record your call, right? And let me, if you're getting hung up on right away, you know, right when someone answers, record it, figure out some way to record it send it over to me and then I can uh, analyze that and kind of see where maybe some mistakes are happening yeah. or if it really truly was just a bad call. But typically um, it's pretty easy for us to start making excuses for ourselves and uh, say, oh, no one could have closed that one. But, but uh, you know, through practice and repetition um, and experience, most people can. I mean, my my I usually protect about 80% of the people I talk to. And that's just, be, it's just because I've been doing it for so long. All right. But most people give up, give up too early. Okay. Um, let's leave it open the floor right now for, for, for Julia to ask some questions. Again, she's brand new. Anyone have some questions for Julia for a brand new, brand new agent to brand new agent of uh, what they can do to get better? I have a question. Yeah, shoot. Hey, Julia, this is Nairi. Hey, Julia, um, was the, uh, were the calls, I mean, were your sales, telesales or face-to-face? -face? Telesales. Okay. That was a good one. All right, let's let's do some role play with, with Julia. We'll see how she stands. Oh, it looks like Eric's raising his hand. Eric, what's the question you got? 
Yeah, Julia, I just wanted to, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we got you. Oh, okay. I just wanted to ask you uh, how many dials you did um, to get to get those appointments or to one call close? Well, that's where I first started just doing my cell phone, but then I got the phone burner, so it kept a little more track. Um, I think probably around five or six hundred dials, but I can't remember because I did part on my phone before I got the phone burner to help me. Okay. Appreciate and then how many how many hours do you think you spent dialing the phones to, to get those five sales? Um, I don't know because you know when I first started doing it, it was part time and now I'm gone full time. Um, I just I just try to call every day in the mornings and the evenings trying to catch people. I find the weekend is a little better to reach people. So, um, but I try to do morning and night every day in the weekends and and then what's your what's your procedure do you do the one call close or you try to set appointments i do both because sometimes i've reached people and they're in the car driving and then they'll tell me yeah i want to you know tomorrow morning at nine o'clock or yeah this evening after work at six o'clock so well you're getting better you're going to be a superstar i like it uh, any more questions so. for Julie? That's a great one, Eric. You know, how many dials does it take? But, you know, with phone burner, you know, you're, I'm guessing you're doing, are you doing three calls in a row? No, because I didn't know how to set that up. I'm doing it where it just goes through all my contacts. Oh, so once I've done that, then I'll do it again in the evening trying to catch these people. So I do that. Well, let's cut your dial time down then, okay? So here, here's a good trick, Julia. So three, you basically take your column, you know, that has all your numbers, right? And your spreadsheet. And then you uh -huh. make another blank column and another blank column. So now you have two blank columns. And then you copy all the numbers in that first column over to the second column and over the third column. Oh. And then you load it into phone burner and it will auto dial those three times in a row. But that's okay. Pretty, you're, you're taking a lot longer to dial because a lot of people don't answer on the first call. They do pick up on the second or third. And then if you yeah. want to get it done even faster, you start. And then after two hours, start back at the beginning. After two hours, start back at the beginning. Two hours, start at the beginning. So we want to try to do is hit these guys up four times in a day, three times in a row. If you were getting a call from the same number, you know, this is the night yeah. you're ring throughout the day. You're probably going to answer it. Like, is a family member in jail? Someone at the hospital? <laughs> you know, what is going on here, right? And what happens is we get irrational in our head and we're scared to dial people that many times because we don't want to ruin the lead. But if we think about it logically, a person that doesn't answer the phone call is still a ruined lead just as much as someone that got mad at you for calling him nine times. And then what you'll find is that the person that picks up the phone that you think is going to be mad is very rare because you're not a telemarketer. You're not a solicitor. You're someone that's reaching back out to someone that asked to be contacted. And in your first couple seconds of your call, you're letting them know that, you know, hey, I'm Ryan. I'm getting back to you on some information you requested online about the state life insurance programs for Arizona, right? So they can't be mad at you that, they ask you to call and you had to call 12 times because they didn't pick up the phone. That's not your fault. So you really only get about one out of a hundred people to get mad for calling that often. And that should speed up your dial time. But the one thing I think is really important to you know, bring up is that Julia, even without knowing that still got some, some sales out of it and was just working really hard. Right. I mean, how many hours a week, how many hours did you put in that week to, to protect five families? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I probably put in maybe six six hours a day. I guess by the time I finished calling on my leads, I have a lot of leads, old leads, new leads. So, so six hours a day. Do you work six six uh six days? Yeah, about six days. Sunday, uh, Sunday. I usually don't list. I just set an appointment for them. So it's thirty six hours, guys. And, you know, we make an average of $1,000 per person we help. And that average goes up as we get more confident and we are pitching a higher value product 
which we should all the time because people should get the most they can get right now because it's on sale. You know, if we're really looking out for our clients, we should pitch higher premiums because we believe in the product and we know they can get where they're going to get a lot more, um, you know, value if they buy it now and they don't wait till they're older. And I've been working on a new script too. So according to me, you made about 138 bucks an hour just dialing the phone and helping protect people. That's, that's not a bad gig right there, right? <laughs> so for all you guys that are on this call right now, sharpening your ax and uh, improving your skill sets, I congratulate you because if we put more work into this business as far as studying and being on these calls and participating, we can get up to that level of a doctor's salary or doctor per hour uh, salary. It's just that most of us, 75% of people that join this business, they just think it's a get rich scheme. And those don't exist, you know, anything worth it in life you can put some hard work into. Cassandra, what's your question? Um, I know it's silly and it takes a lot longer, but I noticed by accident that when people put in their phone number, a lot of times they'll put in their other phone number as the same one. So that'll come up twice in the phone burner. So it just automatically dials them two or three times. <laughs> so um, some of them I just went through because I only have right now like 69 leads that I haven't reached that I've been calling over and over again. So I just went through and punched their number in as the other number and the cell phone number. So it just automatically calls them three times in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Good tip. Thank you for bringing that that's, up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So I want to hear what you do next week, Julia, when you, uh, <laughs> when you actually do the three, three dials in a row. <laughs> All right. Key again, what's your question, buddy? All right. Yeah. Uh, I went through FFL bootcamp and, uh, I just need to learn how to set up that phone dialer thing. The phone burner. What, what is it? Uh Yep, just go to ffrush.com. You'll see a link for phone burner, and there's actually a whole web page that actually walks you through how to use it with videos oh. and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, ffrush.com, and you'll see it on the basic training page, a link for phone burner. Great question. Yuri, what's going on, buddy? Uh, good. Um, what is, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, brother. Yeah. Um, what is, when is an, a lead considered resolved? Like how long should one, keep trying to go and contact a lead before you just like say, okay, this is goes into the old batch and I'm going to go and buy new leads. You know what? It's, it's hard to say. Um, you know, I, it's, I'd say probably half of the ones I book are from the ones I bought this week and the other half are from, you know, from either a month and sometimes I book them from three months ago. I mean, it's really your call, you know, a resolve, technically a resolve lead is someone that, says no right <laughs> until they say no hasn't really been resolved so um you know if you think about it we're we can buy leads on the crm that are three months to a year old so that same lead that you're saying ah, i've been trying to call it for the last what i mean months. what i mean is what is it what should it be resolved in our minds as agents like this is how much time you should devote to the, these 100 leads and once you've gone through it this many times this many dials go buy yourself your next batch of leads. Don't keep beating the same old hundred leads for, well, yeah, for yeah. a week or two. Yeah, great question, Yuri. So the first, first thing is you don't ever want to buy a batch of leads and keep working them um, until you make some money, right? The, that's the first mistake. We always want to get in the habit and every top producer does this is you have a consistent lead buying system. You know, whether it's 200 bucks a week, thousand bucks a week, you're always buying new leads. So I'm always buying new leads every single week. And those are the first ones I call. And then I get to my older leads and then start back to my newest limbs, go back to my older leads, back to my new ones. So you got to get in a habit of investing in your company every single week, whatever that budget is in lead flow, but you have to have lead flow that you're always buying weekly. Okay. And that's like, that's how you get to that 50% are coming from your new ones, 50% from your old ones. If you stop buying them it's like okay now i'm getting 20 percent, 10 percent, 5 percent. now i'm like you know dead in the business right it's kind of like having a restaurant and you're like yeah i'm just gonna kind of keep uh you know serving food until i run out of food and then i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get some all the have the menu full again right this is the restaurant's not gonna work out so the same thing is here is that you have to be buying new leads 
consistently every single week. And if you talk to any top producer, anyone making six figures, that is exactly what they're doing. No one's buying a batch and just seeing what they can get out of them. They're consistent with their lead purchases weekly. Um, as far as resolving a lead, there's no answer to it. You just keep working until you get a hold of them. But as long as you're buying new batches, you're focusing on the new ones first and then kind of working your way down. Okay, great question. Um, all right, Julia, is you here? Yes. Okay, let's let everyone hear because I know you've been on this role play call. What is this, like your fourth time? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and we started off early and we did some role play and then you've been practicing, practicing, practicing. So let's <clears> let the, the guys hear what practice takes like by being on these calls and watching the YouTube videos and getting better so they can get an idea of, of what it took to protect five families. All right, you ready? And no, <laughs> you put me on the spot. I don't feel like, oh. <laughs> you're going to do but, great. Yeah. Well, look, look here, you don't have to, you know, make a sale or protect anybody. We're just having fun. So no pressure here. <laughs> All right. So let's get, let's get, give them an idea of what you're saying. And um, thank you for doing this, Julia, and being a team player. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Julia. I received a request that you filled out online wanting some information on the state life insurance programs. I have your date of birth as 1222. Is that correct? That's correct. Good. See you later. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So um, you said correct. So, okay. Well, I'll have you off here in a second. We're doing everything virtually now due to Corona and the health concerns. So if you wouldn't mind grabbing a pen and we'll get this started. I got a pen. Okay. I want you to write down first. My name is Julia Bassett. My Producer number is one, two, three, four, five. You can go to the uh, insurance commissioner, type that in and look me up to see that I'm a real person. I'm legit. And uh, the state requires me to leave that with you too. So uh, is this a good email that I can send some information over to? And I'd say that, um, email. Yeah, I got it. It's, that's the perfect email. Okay, good. Now, have you been shopping around a while or am I the first person you spoke with? Uh, first person, actually. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad I can help you. So do you have any life insurance right now? Uh, yes, I actually do. But just, um, yeah, I do. Is it through work or is it private? Uh, it's a work policy. Work policy. Okay. Uh, you do know that sometimes work policies, they end when you leave the job. So it's good that you would have something private that carries on. So have you ever applied for any insurance but, or been declined? Uh, no, I haven't been declined or apply, applied for any coverage. Okay, well, good. Okay, now do you work full-time or retired? I'm retired. And then keep in mind too, the work policy too, Julie, a really good concept is if you can't go to work or if you get fired. So some reasons why, you know, I've talked to a lot of families where maybe the husband got cancer Right. And they're like, oh, we're mm -hmm. covered. We're good because, you know, we have uh, we have a, a policy through work. But then because he couldn't go to work, so he's getting chemo and, and people die, you know, later on, the policies a lot of times get dropped after three months. You know, the, the, the employers can't keep paying a person that's not working. Right. So eventually those the work coverages stop if you can't go to work from a, an illness or an injury or something like that as well. So it's a good thing to bring up. Keep going, Julia. I have a question about that. I did have a lady say that she had some through work, her and her husband both. And I did explain, you know, once you leave, she said that she's also got something through work that she carries with her when she leaves. Yeah, most Do of them. Do you know what that is? No, most of them are uh, confused and or they're they're just inaccurate information that, that you can take a work policy. Um with you after you after you leave but then it has to go to private rates and so the rates skyrocket up okay um unless they're maybe a government uh employee sometimes they have some benefits where like retirement package where it includes some life insurance but then at a certain age bracket it keeps lowering um so it's still good yeah. to always have your private coverage um because you have all your bases covered and that's the whole point of of having it right is to make sure we're protected no matter what the future holds okay 
Um, yeah. Let's continue on your script though real quick. You're doing great. Okay. Um, now the way this works is very simple. I'm gonna ask you a couple of medical questions and depending on how you answer those, it'll give me a good idea which carriers might decline you, which ones might approve you. And then once I find, uh, usually I try to tell them before that, sorry, that I'm a broker. But so once we find those options, we want to see which one is offering the best rate. Now, at that point, then we have to fill out an applic application and have it submitted to see if we can get you approved. Unfortunately, we can't do anything today because before you can buy insurance, you have to get approved. And then I start my medical questions. I love it. Um, and then do you anything do you do anything to get rid of the um, objection of banking or anything like that? Like now the banking I pretty much got. A lot of times people, this is what I get a lot of. Not just think about it, but they have to see what they have. Like that lady earlier today when I was speaking with her, she had all this insurance and I tried to explain about the work, but that's well, I need to really see what I have and if it's whole life, if it's term, and oh well, I don't know where it's at. Cause I'll say, Well, I can wait if you want to go get your policy and I'll go over it with you. Or but you half know the time I, they just don't know what they have. You know what I would do when I was in appointments when that would happen? I'd say, Oh, do you remember what the company name is? And they would tell me the name and then I would just Google the company name without asking and I would just call it like, oh, we're going to figure it out right now. It's ringing. <laughs> like, hey, we're oh. the client right now. They have a policy with you. <laughs> like, I'm actually an agent. We just want to figure out what it is. And I just throw them on the spot. But here's what I've noticed is that 90% of the time in 11 years of me doing this, a client would tell me when I would do that, they go, oh, you know, I have a million dollars of coverage. It's full coverage. It's 30 bucks a month, which is impossible. I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, let's call and verify that. Because if you're set, then you're set. But my job is just to make sure. And it's a free service anyways. And I just call them real quick. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's actually 100000 It's an accidental and that expires in five years. And so pretty much like 90% <laughs> of the time, they're just, they don't know what they're talking about. They forget it. So make sure you can just call the numbers and that's kind of a quick tip. So did you run into any issues when you got to the bank account information at all or not really? Only that one time. And I sat there with that lady. I sent over my business card right while I was talking to her. I told her what to do when she got on the insurance site, looked me nice. up. Walked her through once it. I did all that. Yeah. So once I did all that, then she was okay with me. Nice job. Nice job. And what I do guys, they go, Hey, you know, you have to be qualified first. I'm not the one that makes that decision. Uh, the insurance company does. And there need three things to see if you qualify. And we'll get these later down the road. A driver's license for criminal background, a social security for medical and prescription check, and then also a bank account for money laundering and insurance fraud check. Okay. Does that make sense? Nice and short and simple. And then finishing it was, does that make sense? And they always have to say yes. And then you move on. Okay. So you got rid of that objection up front. If it ever comes up in the end, you're trying to get rid of objections before they happen. That way they go, well, why do you need the bank account? Remember I talked to you before. I'm not the one that approves these policies. The insurance companies do. They're the ones taking that risk. So, you know, in order to get qualified, um, you know, if you think about it logically, you can ask them this question. I don't know. Would you give someone, you know, $200,000 tomorrow if they weren't willing to give you a driver's license to check criminal background, the social check, medical and prescriptions, or a bank account to make sure you're not like a fraudster or doing money laundering, would you give someone 200,000? So why should they, right? You know, so it doesn't make any sense, right? So you can kind of just ask them questions. Um, you did a great job, Julie. Now, what I wanna have people uh, hear from you, especially being a brand new agent, is when you first started and we're practicing, I remember we did some role play together individually as well. What were some adjustments that you had to make to get better um, and get, come get to the position where you're at now, and that's and 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 you're going to continue to do it to get better going forward. Um, slow down because I talk real fast. That would be my first thing, and um, just my tone. I'm just like you said. I'm calling you. You requested this. I'm calling you. Taking out the extra friendliness out of it, trying trying mm -hmm. to be needy and get them to like you, right? So I think a lot of us are nervous. Like, oh man, I got to get this person to like me. Well, that's kind of strange, right? If you're calling someone and you're just a service provider, 
You know, why are you going the extra mile, right? If, if the cable company was calling us back because the cable's out, are they going to be extra friendly with us? Like, oh, hey, you know, how's it going, Ryan? How's your day? You know, hope everything's going well, right? You know, hey, just letting you know, we hope we can come out there and get your, co your, your cable fixed, you know, if that's okay with you, right? And they're not going to call that way. Like, <laughs> they're going to call up and be like, yeah, is this, is this Ryan? Okay, cool. We have some time slots to come out at, you know, three or six. What time works better for you, right? And that's kind of the mentality we have to have. These guys already reached out for our help. It's kind of weird if we're being like extra friendly and trying to get them to like us when we're just giving the information they already asked for, right? So don't oversell it and be over friendly, okay? And I think that was kind of like what we were doing a little bit at first, Julia, right? A little too, yeah. being coming a little. That was, that was real friendly. <laughs> yeah, you can you can warm up later, right? I mean, the first minute be standard protocol, but as you're going through it, you know, you're becoming friends naturally. How people become friends that's when you can be a little more friendly because it's just two people talking that don't know each other you're not just going to be friendly right away <laughs> you're trying to get you know, yeah. let that let that develop naturally so you don't come off sales uh, great job julia any final advice for people on this call that have not bought leads that have not bought leads or wrote their first policy just buy leads you're not gonna make money if you don't have leads you can't you can't help people if you don't have leads it is scary but you gotta buy them and you, you'll get over the fear of calling once you start doing it because i think that was probably me the leads and calling like oh my gosh what if i don't need this well what if i do this well what hey you know what just do it you'll learn as you go and you'll get better each time so we got the nike logo just do it and then my favorite yeah. expression uh that i heard a long time ago is is do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain, right? Everything's scary until you start it. But then once you do it, you're like, oh, that was all in my head. What am I being crazy about? Mm. Are you, are you going to get hung up on? Yeah. Are you going to get nose? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if you yeah. guys realize, but we're in a sales position. That's, <laughs> that's totally normal. Okay. <laughs> if, it was, if it was layups, that'd be awesome. We just can't like, with filling out orders, making tons of money. No, it's sales, right? And sales is going to have no's. But here's the thing. Be proud of your no's, okay? If you're getting no's, then you're working, okay? That means you're working, and that's a good thing. And on the other side of everything hard in life and scary in life is everything you want in life. So if you're comfortable, well, there's no way to move up. You got to get uncomfortable to go to that next level. So pick up the phone and, and start dialing and um, send me your scripts. Once you practice them, I don't want you to send me one unless you've listened to it yourself. You think you sound pretty good, then send it to me. Don't send me one that you're just reading a script like a robot. How's that sound? <laughs> Get it to the point where you think it sounds pretty good and then send it to me um, and I will analyze that for you. And I'm coming up with some programs and make that easier for you guys coming up in the future. So lots of good things coming, FFL Rush. Believe it or not, we were, we've been brainstorming over here for a while. We got back from the convention and last night, not last night, the night before, we got off work at like eight, stayed up till midnight working on LinkedIn and, and getting some recruiting stuff called. We just couldn't go to sleep, we kept brainstorming. So we actually stayed up till morning, it was seven. I was like, I guess we should just go to sleep. So we literally worked for like 40 hours, it was crazy. But we have a lot of good stuff coming for, for FFO Rush. So I'm excited to be in business with you guys and have you on the team. All right, we got Raven's got a question. Go ahead, Raven. Hi, Julia, Raven here. Um, so I just want to know how was like your first in-home experience? I don't do in-home. Oh, you don't do in-home? Mm -mm. All telesales. Why don't you talk about your first telesales experience? Scary, sweating. <laughs> But you did just scared, you scared. Your fear, but yeah. yeah, it was fearful that first call. And then once you get that out of the way, it's like a routine and just do it. And then you get more comfortable with it. So, yeah, 75% of the people in this business, they quit the first year, right? Because they just give up too early. And it's just kind of sad because, you know, the reason why you came into this business is you saw your leaders uh, like myself and others um that are just making insane money you know doing something that's good you know we're selling something that's actually putting people in a good position it's hard for people to think about death 
Um, but we know that this protection is necessary and something that's going to really put a family in a good spot when the worst day of their life comes, right? And so feel good about that. But unfortunately, people just give up too early or they don't put enough effort into it. But once you learn it, I mean, after your first year, I mean, you're set for life. It's like, it's like riding a bike, you know, and anytime you want to go out there and make an extra five, $10,000, you have the skill sets to do that and get paid a week later. And that's a pretty incredible career that uh, most of us just don't put enough energy um, and perseverance into uh, learning. So I'm proud of you, Julia, and thank you for your, your work ethic and showing us how that it is possible, you know, if you put your mind to it and put your, your work ethic into it. Uh, Maurice, go thank ahead you. and um, let me know what's going on here, buddy. <clears throat> hey, how are everybody doing? Um, you know, just kind of got linked up today, you know, it feels good to kind of be into this, you know, call and starting to get some um some momentum going just listen to you guys and julie man hey you rocking it out uh, it just feels good you're getting me pumped up um i just wanted to respond because um i work for family first life here probably about two years ago i'm just kind of I, I got into banking i'm doing customer service but um i wanted to kind of reference back to my very first face-to-face -face. like literally i had bought leads i got out there and the guy i, I was at the pretty much time i caught it at a bad time and she didn't want to tell me, but actually her father had passed away. It was actually for him. And she was like, oh, no, you're too late. And I'm like, too late. She said, yeah, he's already dead. I said, you know what? Hey, I, I do extend my deepest condolences. I had to jump back on my feet. I said, hey, you know what? That's why we're here. Do you have any children? And she was like, yes. And this is one of my favorite things to say. It might not work or it may work if you guys don't face to face. I would say, hey, can I take my shoes off? Or do you want me to leave them on? Oh, no, leave your shoes on. Come on in. I went on in. And right then I said, hey, this is why we're here. You know, I do, you know, feel sorry that I had the wrong, I'm at the wrong time, but let me explain to you how I can help secure your children's um, future. You know, God forbid if you were to pass away prematurely. So you just sometimes you just got to shake the dust off. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but if you're doing face-to-face, -face, just, just be confident in what you know and um, don't let, don't be scared about the unknown. You know, that's all I want to add to that. I love it, Maurice. Glad you're on the team, man. So I'm looking for for big, beautiful things from you. Okay, so let's get. Oh, yes, man. Thanks. All right, guys. So one thing I want to bring up here is is the the perspective shift. Okay, obviously we all join this business because we want to make some good income for our families, right? But there's two two ways to do this. There's a wrong way and there's a right way. If we go into uh, a family's house, we go into a telesale or even a Zoom call. Um, and we're trying to make a paycheck and we're caring about our commission. What typically happens is we talk in statements. Like I could say, Hey, Maurice, you know, this is really important to have, you know, you never know what tomorrow might bring. So you need to have this in place today. I mean, you just never know. Right. And you're doing all the talking, right? So if you're talking with statements, you're trying to sell it and you're being selfish and you're caring about yourself. The only thing, there's only three things you should do in any sales approach is be curious and ask questions and, and then give them time to talk, right? So you're asking questions like, hey, what would happen tomorrow? What if you died yesterday? You know, what's the situation look like today for your husband? You know, how would that affect you? Would having some tax-free income help you, right? So these are great questions, right? And you're listening and being patient and listening to the answers. This is someone that's helping, right? And actually cares about the product. After you do that, you do um, reconfirming, right? So you go, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're trying to say is that, you know, if Paul, you know, died yesterday, um, Sarah, you're going to be in a pretty hard spot. And if we had a Paul, if we had a policy in place today that could give you some tax-free money to help you out financially, um, that would be a good thing to have in place. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so you're reconfirming. And then the only other thing too, the third thing is you can tell stories. Right. So you can tell stories about your previous clients. You can take stories from the YouTube videos and share those stories with your clients. Do not be a statement maker because that's a person that's trying to sell to make a paycheck. OK, so important things to kind of remember if you want to make it to the top here and, and get the income for the reason why you're here. All right, guys. So I want everyone to raise their hands that has bought in leads. Who has bought in leads and taken advantage of this discount? All right, we got no one's bought in leads. Okay, we got some people. Bought some leads. I'm doing it this weekend. 
All right. So remember the key, guys. We have to invest in a business to make a profit. Don't be scared. Jump in. We have the lead discounts here. I think. Let's see here. The lead discounts. I think it's till the 15th, right? So buy some leads, guys, and turn that into some profit. Okay. So um, it's up to you. The people that have risen that has raised their hands and got some leads. Um, let's see, um, let's hear some role play. Cause if you haven't bought in leads, there's really no point in doing any work yet. Cause you have nothing to work on. Okay. All right. So who not wants leads, just not this time, just not right now. Okay. We're going to continue to buy leads, right? I'm hoping to buy leads tomorrow. I'm waiting for my commission for my first sale to hit. Nice. Okay. And we always want to get in the habit of putting buying leads weekly. That's part of our weekly schedule, right? So we have to have our schedule. We stick to it weekly, weekly, weekly. And part of it's buying leads every single week. So that's the key to, to making it to the top. I don't care if it's 50 bucks. It should be a thousand bucks, but until you can make some more sales, get to a thousand, even it's 50 bucks, get in the habit of buying leads every single week. It's a super key thing to making this system work. Okay. All right. So, Corey, have you been practicing, bud? Yes, I have. All right, let's do some role play with Corey. Corey is the one who came out to convention. I think he wants to be a, a Hall of Famer next year, right? You, we got to, we got to definitely want months. to get there. Ten and a half months, you're gonna be on stage. That's what you were saying. And I'm, I'm, I'm turning my photo off too, by the way. Well, well Corey go. definitely, you should have bought leads. He he won a thousand dollars worth of leads at the conference. <laughs> you're just sitting in the third yes. row. <laughs> Are yes. Yes, so I, I actually. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are you not going to show us your face? What's going on here? Get your, get your video on. All right, there you go. I want to see that smiling face. We're all team here. All right, cool. So Corey, let's hear your script. Let's, let's pick it apart. Let's see if there's anything we can adjust to it. I thank you for uh, jumping on here, bud. And I'm excited for you to be at Hall of Fame, get that red jacket next year. Cool, let's go. All right, ring hello. Ryan. All right, let's not do a question mark, right? So there's no, it's not necessary. We know the person we're calling. And if I ask with a question, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people do it on the YouTube calls. I just don't get it. It's like, hey, Ryan, you're, the person's already in a defense mode. Because <laughs> they're like, okay, I obviously don't know this person. So just start <clears> like, hey, Ryan, go into it. Hey, Ryan's Corey. Remember Hi, that? Ryan. Hi, Ryan. This is Corey. The reason for the call is we received that uh, request that you filled out online for the information on the Arizona State Regulated Life Insurance Program. Looks like I have your date of birth is 11 correct? That's correct. All right, let's pick it up the pace a little bit. We want to make sure we act, we want to make the client feel like we're busy and we have lots of other clients to talk to. Not too fast, the point where they can understand what you're saying. But at least we want to pick up the, the pacing that seems like we're busy. We're getting to it. Remember, we're doing telesales. Um, it's almost like less is more, okay, versus an in-home. I think uh, we had Brandon Kitchens on stage, and he said that. He's like, my in-home, you know, it's a little lengthy because they're there. They can't kick me out. <clears throat> my telesales, it's like bulletin points. I cut out all the stuff that's not really necessary. So, again, with that style, let's pick it up a little bit. Not too much, but I think that was good so far. All right, ring me low. Hi, Ryan. I'm not right. a telemarketer. I, I just, I'm a little nervous. She got me on the spot. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's, don't be nervous. Yeah. You don't be nervous. You're good. I'm going to stand up, actually. Every, every, everyone go. on here is a brand new agent. You're probably better than all, all right. of them. Let's all go. Right, ring, 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 hello. Hi, Ryan. All right, we'll do it. No, no question mark. Ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Corey. Reason for the call is we received the request that you filled out online for the information on the Arizona State Regulated Life Insurance Programs. Looks like I have your date of birth is 11 70 correct? That's correct. Okay, perfect. I'll have you off the phone in a sec. Just giving you a quick call to let you know that we processed the request and now due to the pandemic, the new variant, I'm currently servicing my clients two ways. I can either go to your home and do a face-to-face -face, or we could do it via phone call right now which option is best for you 
Uh, we can do it right now. Perfect. All right, this process is simple, very simple and easy. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. I need you to write down some information that the state requires me to give you. Uh, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, Corey. So I think that sounds good. You're using a little bit of, of some stuff at Branding Kitchens and, and mm -hmm. willing to go one way or the other. Um, so yeah, it's good. Good. I know you're a little nervous because I threw you on the spot being a Hall of Famer. <laughs> but the thing <laughs> I think is something to, to stand out is that you're being yourself. You know, I know I spent uh, a few days with you out there in Miami, and that's how you talk, right? Right. Oftentimes, you know, I have Riley as a new, new agent, and uh, he. He, and he just sounds like he's someone else. He's I'm like, Riley, that's not you, man. Who are you, George now? What happened to Riley? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So when you listen to yourself, like, is that how I would talk to like a friend or a family member? Or am I trying to be someone I'm not, right? And, and very good. people can naturally pick up on people that are trying to be someone they're not, right? If I'm calling you, Corey, and I'm like, Hey, how's it going, Corey? This is Ryan Reynolds. How are you doing today? <laughs> you know, like you're probably gonna pick up that it's not really me, right? Because that's not how I talk. Okay? Sound like a telemarketer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound like a telemarketer, exactly. All right, Tracy, you've been practicing. I know we talked last week. Hi, yes. Um, I have been practicing. I'm I'm willing to give it a go. Let's let's hear it, Tracy. Let's 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 knock it out. Okay. All right, ring ring love. Hey, Ryan, this is Tracy. I'm giving you a call back regarding that form you mailed into our office. You had requested additional information on mortgage protection insurance. This is that type of insurance that would pay, help pay off your loan in case of critical illness or death. I have here that your birthday is January 1st, 1980, and you're at 123 Main Street. Is that still right? I think it's sounding awesome. Yeah, you're doing good. Thanks. I want to make too, too many changes there. Please um, do. Yeah, a, a couple of quick adjustments. I'm going to hear it one more time. Okay. Um, but, but it sounds like you, sounds professional, sounds like you know what you're doing. Um, if you can get it into maybe, let's try a little bit like uh, more like having just an, a normal conversations versus um, to, uh, I don't know. Let me just try, try a, how would you talk to like a friend or something? Let me hear a little bit more like you talk to a friend, but not overly excited and see if we pick up any different changes here. So a little okay. more relaxed, I guess I would say. All right, okay. let's hear it one more time. Ring, ring, hello? Hey, Ryan, this is Tracy. I'm giving you a quick call back about that mailer you filled out and sent to our office. This is about the mortgage protection insurance that would help pay off your loan in case of critical illness or death. My name is Tracy. I'm the local field underwriter here in the county and just need to verify that your birthday is January 1st, 1980, and you're at 123 Main Street um okay that's good much. yeah that's good um let's try one more time one okay. more, relax, relax even more okay like you're sitting, sitting back in your in your couch and you're just like, it's so, i feel like i watch videos where people are like talk fast get it in and then others are like be more conversational ask how they're doing and well, i'm trying to have every, you, know. you know it's it's yeah you're right and every time i i hear somebody Sometimes you got to adjust it to whatever they're doing and, and see if you can get to the right point. But what we're trying to find is that that nice, confident tone. You know, how does it okay. make, how am I sounding? How am I feeling? And that just kind of comes with practice. You know, I can definitely tell you practiced it. I think you're going you're gonna to do fine. Like I said, I think it's perfect. And you're just going to get better as you go. I'm just trying to see if I, if, if I would make any changes and then see if I like it better or if, you're, if we're good where we're at. So yeah. just okay. really take it down to kind of the, you don't have to talk slow, but just really kind of just chilling, lazy style, <laughs> and then <laughs> to see if it if it adjusts and and sounds a little more, it sounds better or not. You know, I'll let you know. All right, All right. I'll give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan. This is Tracy. I'm giving you a call back about the form you mailed to our office. This was for mortgage protection insurance. This is the type of insurance that would help pay down your mortgage in case of critical illness or death. I'm the field underwriter and just need to verify a couple details. I have your birthday here is January 1st, 1980, and your address is 123 Main Street. Is that correct? That's correct. See, I like it better. That was good. Okay. Yeah, I'm like not really guy. a chill person, so it's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I mean, you just sound like someone I would listen to and talk to, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's get this done. But yeah, yeah, I, 
I've been trying to do the, um, the, and I'm really new to this and I'm doing this part-time. I have like a quote nine to five job and I've been trying to do the, um, the one call close sales. I don't know if anyone here has had success with that, but to me, it feels more natural than, um, like setting up another appointment. I, I don't know, especially if you're doing it all on the phone. It, yeah, it does. And again, it's just going right into the appointment. Like it's, it's normal. Um, keep in mind on these scripts, guys, if there's something you think is not necessary, then take it out. Okay. Less is more. I'm um, getting right to the point is more. Um, I'm working on a, a new uh, script right now that I'll give you guys next week. I'm testing it out myself first, but it's, it's working really well. It's actually a lot shorter. Um, so I think you guys will like it. So um, anyway, can I just say one that? more thing? I'm going to put it in the chat. I found this video, like an FFL video on YouTube, where I think this guy really does it like bare bones, like for yeah. one call to close. I'm going to throw it in the chat because I think it's a good one. Yeah, thank you. And then you. I'll yeah. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep talking. You sound you sound right. awesome. I like your little accent too. It's, it's friendly and awesome. <laughs> You're doing good. Very but, Chicago. Thank yeah, you. Let, Appreciate it. Exactly. So less is more. All, all these scripts are really written out to give you some stuff to say. But like I said, if you don't want to ask for the email, you don't have to. If you want to skip some of those power questions, you don't have to. Um, it's, it's confident to say less and you actually come off more assumptive by doing so. So um, on my new presentation script, literally, I think before my opening was like 10 minutes and now I'm doing it in like two minutes and going right into the medical and it's been working really well. So um, I'm going to work on some very bare bone scripts and I'll give them to you guys next week. All right, cool. So um, have you bought some leads this week, Tracy? Yes, I bought 450 leads. I'm taking all next week off work, my nine to five job, and I'm going to try to really like make something happen here. Bought nice. like all aged mortgage. They're like all aged mortgage protections. So like $2, $3 leads. That's awesome. So $480, let's times it by 1.37. So you got $657 worth of leads yep. for that price. That's pretty good discount, guys. I don't know why people aren't buying those leads. <laughs> um, are you on work spots? I'm not yet, um, okay. but I'm going to get there. Get, yeah. get on some work spots too. But um, yeah, if anyone is on work spots, post that in the group chat so everyone can get some discounts because I gave mine out probably been already used five times. So let's uh, keep posting and helping each other as a team get some discounts. All right. So who else wants to practice their script? Who's practiced it a little bit, wants to hear how they're sounding, see if we can make some adjustments. All right, let's go. Is it Ozan? Uh, <clears throat> it's Ozan. Ozan, Ozan. Yeah, all it's right, okay. Ozan. How you doing, my man? Oh, doing all right, man. Just... Uh... Yeah, have you have you burnt got out. Some, yeah, burnt out. Oh, yes, nine it's to five, man. Something new, right? Yeah, no, like that's why this is all good, man. But here, there's no other, there's no <laughs> other business in the world that you know you can just put a ton of energy into and make the kind of money you can as quickly as you can as this one, right? Uh -huh. You know, for you sure. take Grady Polson in three years. You know, he probably worked sixty hours a week for three years. Probably took Sundays off with his family and now he's a multimillionaire. I mean, that's yep. incredible. You got, you got Zach that uh, um, is 25 and now is a multimillionaire. So, yep. you yeah, know, no. it's pretty cool <clears throat> to be self-employed and that we get paid for the amount of work that we put in versus, you know, having someone be in control of our paycheck and salary. So exactly. the harder you put in, the better. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, you're on the right path. You're on the right path. You're doing something yeah. right. That's a good thing. Yeah. Man. All right. So let's hear your script. Cool. Yeah, let's All right, go for ring, it. ring, hello. Hey, Ryan, it's Oz. I'm just getting back to you on some information requested for the Illinois uh, life insurance programs. Uh, just got to verify some information real quick. Uh, birth date is 12-12-89, right? That's correct. That's correct. All right, let's pause real quick. Um, let's try raising <clears throat> our voice a little bit, and let's see okay. if we can make some adjustments there. Um, I know you're probably a little nervous doing it, but yeah. you know, it's going to get, get easier as we keep practicing um, over yeah. and over again. And if you can do this, it's going to be easier when you're dialing some clients too. So we're all one team here. No worries. But let's try raising our voice a little bit more and let's see if it, if it comes off a little more assertive and a little more confident. And, cool. and uh, let's try it that way. Try, try to shout it out to me. You know, 
well, anyone that's in my house, they know when I'm dialing or talking to a client. It's like they can hear me throughout the whole house. <laughs> okay. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan, it's Oz. I uh, just came back to you on some information requested on the Illinois life insurance programs. All I right, just got to pause. Mm. It's sounding good. It's sounding a little relaxed and friendly. I want to try it where you're talking extra loud, extra loud. I want to see okay. what brings up our assertiveness. We want to be like, <clears throat> I'm in charge. I'm the boss. I'm in control. You're going to answer to me. I'm going to get you a policy today. All right. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan. And so is on. Just getting back to you on some information requested on the Illinois life insurance programs. I just need to verify some information real quick. Is your birth date 12 12 89? All right. See, I like the louder better, but then you kind of tapered off and got, got a little quieter afterwards. Yeah. All right. Loud the whole way through. You're announcer at a wrestling match. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Okay. Hey, Ryan, it's Oz. Just getting back to you on some information you requested on the Illinois life insurance programs. Is your birth date 12 12 89? That's correct. Cool, cool. So I'll have you off on the phone uh, quickly here. Um, is, is now a good time for you to sit down and write down some information? Okay, so that line we don't want to ever ask is now now a good time because everyone's going to say no, no, it's not a good time. Okay, okay. so take take that line out. Okay. Um, and I, you know what, I know in the script, it says, you know, I'm gonna have you have you off the phone here quickly. I don't know if even that's a good line too. You know, yeah. I think maybe just, you know, taking control and going, hey, we're doing everything virtually now because of the pandemic it takes 10 minutes, grab a pen and paper, let me know when you're ready. Okay. And you know, I think that's kind of a better line <clears throat> because it's controlling and assumptive versus uh, mm -hmm. asking them if it's, a, if it's a good time, we're putting the power back into the client's court and going, hey, I want to sail from you. I don't want to offend you. Is it a good time? Or the person that's just busy, like, hey, just getting back to you. Uh, we're going to take care of this now because we're so swamped. So go ahead and grab that pen and paper. It's going to take about 10 yeah. minutes when you're ready, okay? But okay. when you raise your voice, you definitely came off a lot more confident and assertive. Um, but the nice thing I'd, I'd give you some, some compliments on it. You sound very, sounds like you. You sound friendly. You're clear. Definitely yeah. someone I'd want to talk to and, and probably do some business with. You sound trusting too. So I think that was good. Yeah. Um, let's go through the rest of your script real quick and see if there's anything that we can pull apart and make better and we'll kind of keep moving forward. Okay. Let's do it one more cool. time from the top and then I'll stop okay. you, uh, if I see anything and then we'll just keep continuing forward. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan, it's, it's Oz. I'm just getting back to you on some information requested at the Illinois life insurance programs. Uh, I just need to verify some information real quick. Uh, is your birth date 12, 12, 89? It is. And you're talking a little soft. Let's go up higher. We got a shout, baby. You got a shout. <laughs> All right. Ring, ring, hello. I mean, here, hey, I'll give Ryan. you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay. Okay. Um, Ozon, Ozon, Ozon. All right. Yeah, so, Ozon, Ozon, can you like this? Ozon? That's hey, right, man. Right? What's up? Okay. So, I could go, hey, Ozon, it's Ryan. Um, getting back to you on some uh, life insurance information that you requested. Yeah. Uh, just need to verify your date of birth is 62181. Or, I'm gonna be like, Hey, Ozan, it's Ryan. Hey, get back to you on some information you request. I just need to verify your birthday. Is it 62181? See the difference, right? So confident right. people talk loud because they're in charge mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, I'm the man. I'm a gorilla. Oh, 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 oh. Right? <laughs> so, right. So talk a little bit louder. And what naturally happens is when we're nervous and we're brand new, we talk quieter, right? We yeah. talk quieter. So a way that we can naturally sound more confident is just simply shouting, just being very aware of where is my my uh, my sound level, right? Is it, is it high or is it low? And if I'm feeling nervous, if I naturally talk higher or with a higher volume, it's going to make me feel more confident too. Mm -hmm. okay. cool. All right, ring, ring, low. Hey, Ryan, it's Oz. Just getting back to you on some information you requested for the Illinois Life Insurance Programs. Uh, your date of birth is 12-12-89. Is that correct? Ooh, that was good. That was good. All right. You can feel the difference. You're like, Hey, I'm Oz. That was good, man. I like that. All right, continue forward. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, where was I? Uh, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. So is your date of birth 12, 12, 89? That's correct. Cool. So I'll have you off the phone in, in about 10 minutes or so, but, uh, you know, uh, I lost it. <laughs> just keep going. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so just need to verify your age real quick. Is uh, date of birth 12, 12, 89? That's correct. Cool. And it looks like I have you at 123 Main Street. Is that still current? That's current. That's where I live. Cool. So we're doing everything virtually now with COVID and it also allows me to help more families. 
Um, so go ahead and grab a pen and paper and write down some information for me. All right, got a pen and paper. That was confident. I like it. Keep going. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. So I need you to write down my name. It's O Z A N or Oz for short, whatever you prefer. Um, and then my license number for the state is one, two, three, four, five, six. And with those, you can go on the website and look me up and, and know that I'm real. And I have to do that because state requires us to do this. So read that back to me when you get a chance. Okay, read it back. <laughs> Sorry, could you go on? <laughs> Uh, cool. I was the confident man. I got it. I wrote it down. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the guy's yeah. too loud. Well, I got to turn my cell phone volume down. He's too loud. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, cool. Um, so, you know, I lost it. Where was I? Uh, da, 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 da. Cool. So uh, what's the reason why you, uh, so what's the reason why you, you inquired about the health insurance or life insurance? Are you looking to protect a loved one, you're looking to protect a home. Um, tell me a little bit about what, what you, why you requested the information. All right. So let's ask some shorter questions. Just okay. go, who are you trying to protect? Gotcha. Okay. Because yeah, the more, like, if we're asking them lengthy, we just basically ask like three questions. It comes off yeah. more needy than just being in control of the conversation and going, gotcha. all right, so who are we trying to protect? Uh -huh. Oh, you know, just looking into it. Okay. So if you died, who do you want money to go to? Right. Okay. okay. Who do you who do you care about? Who do you love? <laughs> like, you know, like, I guess yeah. my sister. Okay. How would she feel if you die? Would it be devastating for? Her? All right. Would you like to leave her some money? Why is that? Right. So you're just curious, asking some questions. All right. Go ahead. Uh. Cool. Uh. So what I was gonna say. Uh. Yeah. So uh. Ryan. So who who are you looking to protect? Uh. That's gonna be my wife. Your wife. Cool. All right. So. What would that situation be if, you know, God forbid you, you didn't come home tomorrow? Um, I mean, I guess she'd be pretty sad. At least I hope she would be sad. I mean, we've been married for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. But financially, like, yeah. How would that uh, look for your wife? Uh, she'd be in a hard spot. I'm actually the, uh, the breadwinner. Um, so, yeah, financially, she'd be in a, a definitely a hard spot. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. Can I assume that you have a mortgage as well? I do have a mortgage, yeah. Gotcha. So you're looking to protect your wife and I'm assuming, would you also want to protect the mortgage as well? So your wife doesn't have to lose the house and the money invested. I guess I never thought about it, but yeah, that, that actually would be a good idea. You mean like paying off the house? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so, so we can, these are good questions to ask and, and make sure we, when we, when we say, so it sounds like, so, I think a really good one we're doing our reconfirming is to use mm -hmm. these lines. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like no. what I'm saying, what you're saying is that, and then blah, 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 blah. Do I have that right? Right. Okay. So I was like, correct me if I'm wrong. And that's mm -hmm. in my new script that I'll give out to you guys next week, but um, great job. Great questions. Okay. So do that. Try that one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're saying. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but sounds like, you want to protect your mortgage and your wife. Do I got that right? So this is this is our moment when we do our reconfirming that we can add in lots of stuff, right? So okay. they might be kind of short with you, but now I can add lots of things to it. So I can say, hey, you know, Oz, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the reason why we're talking today is, is you have a wife and uh, she's, she doesn't work. And if something happens to you, man, she's out of a ton of money. And so if that did happen, um, having some tax-free income to pay off that house so she doesn't lose your house, your investment, then also some income to replace yours so she has some time to get back on her feet is the reason why we're talking today. Do I have that right? So you can add in a lots of really good stuff. You know, okay. there might be someone's like, oh, my son. Yeah, I mean, he lose a little bit of money. Um, yeah, I care about him. And then I'm going, hey, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have a son, he's 14. Obviously, you're a good father. You love him a lot. And uh, it would be devastating if, if something uh, happened to you. And so you the well, reason why we're talking today is you want to make sure that he has a good life, that he can go to college and, you know, without his father there, that's going to be terrible, that at least you're giving him a gift that he can push life forward. Is that kind of what we're doing today? Do I, I'm on the same page. So this is your moment where you can kind of add stuff in that is kind of like a statement. 
but you don't come off like a salesperson because you go and correct me if it's wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but sounds like what you're trying to say is this. And then you're mm -hmm. ending it with, do I have that right? Right. So now you're not being a statement maker. You're being someone that's like, Hey, I'm just trying to understand you try to figure out if I'm on the right page, so I can better help you. And that's someone that's trying to service somebody and help them versus trying to sell them. Is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's go, let's go to the line. Let's just fast forward a little bit to um, the line that talks about the, uh, the social security bank account information. I really do believe that, um, you know, it's, it's a really good ob objection one to get over up front. And it's also going to save you a lot of time. You know, if someone's uh, like absolutely not going to give their bank account information, well, you know, let's move on to the next one. So we're not spending 30 minutes on the phone talking to someone that you know, also believes in conspiracy theories and everyone's out to get them. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah. all right, let's hear how you, that's how you do hear how you do that line. Okay. So do you want to like, is it the part where I'm talking about the, like the process, like, Hey, I'm going to need these information. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Let's do that process. One. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Ryan. So just so you know, the, the process that we're going to go through today is one, I can't make the decisions for you. I wish I could tell the insurance companies to do what they want to do, but it's not up to me. So in order to, to blah, 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 I'll just, just start. Before you left that. All, right, <laughs> yeah. all right, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ryan. So just so you know, the, the process that how this call is going to go today is uh, if I find something that's in your budget and that is going to protect your wife, your house, and potentially your kids, um, we're going to submit an application um, and it's, it's so the insurance companies can decide if they're going to even accept you or not. In order to do that, I'm going to need your social security, your bank account, and your driver's license. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry. yeah. Does that make sense? So, okay. So I think it's better, you know, shorter, sweeter, maybe cut out a little bit of that, but okay. you know, something like the, along the lines of, um, so, you know, I'm not the one that makes the final decision. That's the, that's the insurance company I had to qualify for that first. Um, so that's what we're doing today. Okay. To see if you can even get qualified. Um, right. And they're going to need three things for that, for that approval process to see if you can even qualify. They're going to need a driver's license. That's a check criminal background, social security. That's how they check their medical records and prescriptions and bank account information to make sure there's no money laundering or insurance fraud. Does that make sense, Oz? Right. You feel like you have to say yes every time, right? Because when yeah. the key lines you should be using a lot in, in this is like, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because everyone has to say yes. Yeah. No one wants to say, I don't get that. Uh, I don't know. But I think it's actually better to, you know, if I were to say, you know, hey, Oz, you know, to see if you can get qualified, I need your driver's license, social security, bank account information. Does that make sense? Sounds a little weird, right? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't, I might be like, dude, I'm not giving in your bank account information. But if you give a reason to why, right, then it makes a little more sense, right? Hey, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not the one making the decision here today. We, I don't need this now. We'll get it later. But to see if you can actually get approved, which is the whole point of this call, they, the insurance company needs three things for that qualifying, qualifying process. Okay. They need a driver's license. That's how they check criminal background, social security. That's how they check medical and prescription records and then bank account to make sure there's no money laundering or insurance fraud taking place. Does that make sense? Right. You, you'd say yes every time, right, Oz? Yeah. 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 So quickly, confidently, don't give it a lot of breath. If you're making a big deal, the client thinks it's a big deal, but this is going to eliminate a lot of those objections, especially when we're new, not coming out confident. But even me, you know, doing 11 years, you know, I don't, I leave that line out sometimes. And then I get to the part and they're like, I'm not getting my bank. <clears throat> like, oh, that was dumb. Why didn't I do that first part? Right. So yeah. I think it was really good. All right. Cool. Let's move on. We'll move on to some other people here. All right. We got Mr. Eric. Eric in the house. Why don't you take your take yourself off there, bud? How you doing, bud? Doing good. Out there in New York City, right? Uh, not in the city. I'm in Rochester, upstate New York. Okay, well, I guess New York State. Awesome. Okay, so you're a Yankees fan then, right? Or you Mets? Not not much of a baseball fan. I'm a Buffalo Bills football fan. Buffalo Bills. All right, let's yeah. go. All right, man. So you ready to? Have you been practicing your script? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, dude. How you feeling about it? I feel good. I don't have it memorized. Uh, practicing on live reps on the phone, um, so it's been it's been good. Okay, so if if you were to um, if you were to go to uh, college 
in this profession? Would you rather get a, a high school diploma or would you rather get a master's degree? Who, which one's going to make you more money? Master's degree. The master's degree. That's right. So how we get our master's degree is we, we read this script over and over and over again and pull it away while we're not looking at it, see if we can say without looking at it. And remember, when we're saying it without looking at it, we want in our heads, we're trying to we're trying to like memorize the script and say it word for word. We want to get to the point where we understand the concepts and we, we can say it in different ways each time, but I'm hitting, you know, the bolts and points, right? So we'll, we'll hear, hear you out. Let's, let's hear what you have to say. And then after this call tonight, let's get into the master's program. Sound fair? Sounds fair. <laughs> All, right. All right, Eric. So let, let's hear how you sound, man. Ring, ring, hello? Hi, Ryan. This is Eric. I'm calling because we received a request to fill it out online for the information on the Ohio State Life Insurance Programs. Looks like I have your date of birth listed here as 10-12-1975. We got that right. We got that right. Okay, so we're going to pause here real quick and let's raise our voice. Let's raise it up. I want you shouting. Let me get closer to the microphone. We'll, we'll, we'll hear it. There we go. But naturally, it's going to change our tonality when we raise our voice. Okay. So try to raise it, get that nice, deep, confident voice. And let's, let's try one more time. Let's get some yelling in there. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan, this is Eric. I'm calling because we received the request you filled out online for information on the Ohio State Life Insurance Programs. Looks like I have your date of birth listed here as 10-12-1975. We got that right? We got that right. Okay, one more time, really loud. I want you angry like you're at a baseball game and or I guess a Buffalo Bills game. You're shouting you for your go. team here, okay? <laughs> Let's get super loud. All right, ring it up. Right. My my mic might be down because I'm I'm speaking it out here for you. <laughs> Are I'll, you? I'll, I'll yell at you. <laughs> no, let's just go extremely loud, like you're like ridiculously loud. Like try to be like like over the top. Like, hey, Eric, it's Ryan. Get back to you. <laughs> like, okay. Just hear it that way. Okay. I want to see if we change a difference here. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Eric. I'm calling because we received the request you filled out online for the Ohio State Life Insurance Programs. Looks like I have your date of birth listed here as 10-12-1975. We got that right? We got that right. I like it, actually. All right, keep going. Just calling to let you know we processed your request. We are doing everything virtually now, so it only takes about 10, 15 minutes. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper, and I will get you some information. All right, Eric. Good job, buddy. It sounds better when we talk loud. The only thing I can tell a little bit is it, it sounds a little bit scripted, right? But you actually are doing a lot better than most. I can tell you practiced it. You know, you've read it several times out loud. Now we got to get to the point where you get it memorized. And then if you can get it memorized, you can take little sections out of that script and try to write like maybe two words to remind you about that paragraph, right? And then try to look at that piece of paper and look at those key words and then say it without looking at it, okay? Anything that you're missing um, that you don't say because you can't remember it, that's okay. It's probably not important to you, so you probably shouldn't say it anyways, okay? So let's practice, let's get some master's program tonight, but good job, Eric. I think you're sounding good, okay? It's, it's not like you're reading the first time. You don't sound, sound robotic. You have a nice, friendly voice. Um, I think a little bit more getting it to the point where it's memorized and maybe some bullets and points is actually gonna help you more than reading from a script. All right, buddy, I'm proud of you, man. Let's keep pushing. Sounds good. All right, man. All right, Mario, we, you've been practicing. I see you got the professional headphones on there, bud. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope it helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a good voice. You, you look like a telemarketer. You ready to rock it? Yeah, right, telemarketer. I'm, a, I'm no telemarketer. <laughs> telesales I just feel guy. requests. Sorry, I met a telesales guy. Sorry, telesales guy. <laughs> Telesign, there you go. Yeah, but I do like you correcting me. You go, I know telemarketer. I'm just serving some families here. <laughs> All right, let's let's hear how you're sounding, Mario. Have you been practicing? You got have you been able to say your script memorized, you know, without looking at it? Um, not quite there, but I got the ideals down though, I think. Okay, good. So let's what well, do me a favor. Uh, and once we do some role play, can you practice tonight and get it to the point where you can say it without looking at it? 
Yeah, I'm 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 working on that because I'm already making calls, so I gotta get you know get good at this. So yeah, and so a lot of people like I remember training Mark a little bit ago. He's not on this call, but um, you know, Mark would just be like, "Hey, I can't be on the call because I have an appointment." Hey, you know, I can't do roll because I'm working, and he wasn't making any money, right? So it's like, well, you gotta sharpen your axe a little bit so you can cut the trees faster, right? So. Uh, a lot of us, what can happen is, you know, we're practicing, we're on the role play calls, we're watching videos, we're practicing out loud, and then we start making some money. We're like, oh, man, I got this down. I am just the best at this. And then they stop watching videos, and then their money starts going down, right? Because the axe is getting dull, and now you can't cut the trees anymore, right? So always sharpen our axe, always part of our weekly routine. And once you get to a point where you're making some good money, we really should still be spending about 10 hours a week uh, studying and sharpening our acts. That's how we maintain that money flow. Okay. So let's hear how you sound, Mario. Let's see if we can make any adjustments here. Thank you for being on the call, man. Thanks for participating as a team. All right, ring, ring, hello. Orion, this is Mario. I'm just getting back to you on that information you requested regarding California state life insurance programs. Now, I have your date of birth here as 7 4 1969. Is that correct? That's correct. I got your address as 124 Maple Street. Is that correct? That's correct. Great. Now, I'll just to let you know, I've been assigned to process your request. Now, we're doing everything virtually over the phone. It takes about 10 minutes. Go ahead, if you will, please pick, uh, no, go ahead, grab a pen and paper. I need to give you some information. Cool. Okay. Good first run. Let me hear it one more time. I would say it sounds a little bit uh, scripted. Right. Like I said, you haven't got to a point that it's memorized. I can kind of tell you're reading from a script. And when people can tell you're reading from a script, we sound like a telemarketer. Right. So a lot of times when you get hung up on, they're not taking it serious because we don't sound like a person that's just reaching out, trying to help them out. It sounds like we're just reading from a script and that makes them feel like we don't care about them. And then they hang up on us. Right. And so the only way we're going to make some money is if we care about our clients and if we truly cared about them, we would we would have our script pretty much normal, memorized to a point to where you can have some conversations. But I think as far as your tonality, you sound great. Your voice sounds clear. Um, all that stuff sounds really good. I can tell you practiced it, um, a, 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 you know, probably about 50 times. Um, so you can tell that you kind of know what you're reading, but I can still pick out the tonality that it sounds a little bit more like you're reading it versus just having a conversation. So we got to get to the point where we're, we're having like a conversation. All right, so let's, let's try it one more time. Relax a little bit more. Try to get a little more loose with it. Try to, when you're looking at your script, to kind of glance at it versus trying to read every word, word for word. And that should loosen you up a little bit so it doesn't sound so scripted. All right, ring, ring, hello. Ryan Mario, I'm getting back to you on that information you requested over on the line regarding California life insurance programs. Now, I have your date of birth listed here as uh, 7 4 1969. Is that correct? See, that was way better right there, that second version. I liked it. A little more loose, a little more loose with it. Um, so that was good. All right, let's continue forward. I got your address listed here as 1245 Maple Street. Is that correct? That's correct. Great. Well, I'm calling to let you know I've been assigned to process your request. Now, we're doing everything virtually. Um, due to COVID. It's only gonna take about 10 minutes. Uh, can you grab a pen and paper? I need some information I get, I'm required to give you. Yeah, yeah, I got a pen and paper. Great. And then My what name I would is, change, let's pause real quick, Mario. What I would yeah. change it to is, is take out the can you, right? right? And we wanna do more of a call of action. So I'm not sure if now that's- go me. ahead. Yeah, yeah just like um, go ahead and grab a pen and paper, let me know when you're ready. Right. Gotcha. That's more of a person that's in charge and control, knows what he's doing, is confident, and is trying to get this done, get the information to him so he can get to the next appointment. Right. So we just want to sound busy versus the person that uses the expression, hey, can you go ahead and grab a pen and paper? That's a person that's asking permission. You're giving them and saying, hey, you're in charge now. I'm, I want a commission check and I hope I don't offend you. Right. So it's all little kind of tweaks on our words that's going to change the perspective of the call and uh, let the client know whether you're there to truly try to help them. You don't care if they get a policy or not, so it's not gonna affect you, but you're just there to do a job and from the right place. All right, perfect. All right, let's try that line one more time without the canyon. Okay. 
go ahead and grab a pen and paper so we can, I can get this out of the way. I need to give you some information described. that's required. All right, let's try one more time. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper so I can get this information that's required out of the way. Let me know when right. you're ready. All right, so we trailed off then. Let's say it with some confidence the whole way through. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper so I can get some information out of the way. Let me know when you're ready. Boom, shakalaka. That was the good one. I liked it. All right, cool. So let's continue forward. Ring, ring, or keep going from where you left off. Very good. So when you made the request, who are you looking to protect, Ryan? Good. That's I love that line right there. That's good. Um, I was I'm not really sure. I was just kind of looking into it. Well, if you died today, uh, who would you like to avoid leaving a financial burden with? Ooh, that was a good one. I like that one, Mario. Um, I guess that would be um, my mom. My your mom. mom. Okay, great. And what's your mom's name, by the way? Uh, her name's Karen. Karen. Okay, great. And uh, have you been looking for a long time for coverage? So, set something up? Uh, no, I haven't been looking very long, you know, just looking into it now. Do you have any current life insurance? Um, no, I do not, actually. I don't have any life insurance. Have you ever applied before, been declined? I uh, haven't applied before. Nope, have been declined. Very good. Well, let me let you know how this is going to work. It's very simple. I'm a, a licensed broker. And I'm going to pull up all the options here in the state of California. And now it's based on your health and your age. I'm going to ask you about five medical questions. And depending on how we answer those questions will help us determine whether or not you'll be declined or if we can get you coverage. Now, once I pull up these options for you, we're going to look at the company that's going to provide you the best rate and uh, the best rate. And at that point, we're going to submit the application. We're going to see if we can get you coverage. Now, unfortunately, I can't commit to anything today because before you can purchase life insurance, you have to be approved first. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Now, if we do find something in your budget to see if we can qualify, the insurance company will need three pieces of information. They'll need your driver license. That way they can determine any criminal background. They'll need your social security number. That helps them to see and check your prescription record. And they'll need your bank account. Make sure you're not involved in any money laundering. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, so on that line, let's do some adjustments. So obviously we need to read this thing a lot more so we can be a little more smooth. But I say I think the huge thing for you, Mario, is that I love is is you just sound professional your tone now to your tone is really good like so you don't change anything about your tone it's just like professional i'm just doing my job i'm here to do this standard protocol and so your tone is just excellent it's just you can tell we haven't practiced the script quite enough now as far as that as far so let's get our master's program tonight Let's get that, you know, because obviously people with master's degree make more than a high school degree, right? So we're going to get our master's tonight. We're going to memorize that thing and then uh, be able to say it without looking at it and get to a point and take some notes on it and try to look at your script, like I was telling Eric, and, and write down some bulletin points for each section. Now, those bulletin points should be short, no longer, no more than three words, because if we're putting extra words in three we're going to start reading it like a script rather than using it as a reminder okay and then try to go through that thing looking at your bulletin points instead of the actual script and a funny thing's going to happen you're going to sound more like yourself and it's actually going to start working out a lot better that's a little secret of kind of where i'm taking this next week but i'm <laughs> getting a little out of myself but um, as far as also on that line uh that you talked about the driver's license social and bank account information I would cut out some words that are not necessary and shorten it up. Um, okay. So it sounds like it's not as big a deal as it needs to be. So if there's something in there that you're not needing, then take, take it away. I think that the line that I wrote um, in that script is a little lengthy. Um, so I'll probably be adjusting that anyways and updating the script. So less is more on that one, which comes off a lot more confident 
but I love that you ended it with, does that make sense? So good, good job on that. All right. Great job, Mario, man. How, how's everything else going, man? Any quick questions? Um, working through the leads, you know, um, I did take advantage of the, um, uh, what is it? Work spot. Discount. So I, yeah. Discount. So that, you know, and I can tell by just the quality of leads, you know, originally I bought was, um, you know, this dollar fifty lead, so cheap. Yeah, we're talking about that. You know, I'm going to work them, um, you know, but I notice a lot of them, you know, uh, numbers disconnected, whatever. But I mean, that goes par for the course. But uh, I'm pretty excited about getting these uh, instant leads. So Yeah, I mean, right those, now, uh, too, I mean, for normally if they're eleven dollars, you know, minus uh, point three seven. Oh, wait, wait, what is that time? Sorry. What's, what's three, seven time? It would be, uh, let's see, 100 minus 37, 63. So we got $11 lead times 0.63. That's it. Getting it for seven bucks, dude. I mean, that's yeah, seven bucks. That's incredible. Yeah. Right. I mean, that allows you to buy, you know, out of a hundred, now you get, you know, 137. So that's great. Yeah. So I'm glad you took advantage of that work spots, way to invest in your company and invest in your future and keep trucking. You're, you're going to get there. So you, what would you, what could you tell on the $11 pick? You have some people pick up anyone, you know, hanging up on you right away. Any kind of major. Well, I just got them this afternoon be, nice. you know, before we came on, but I printed them out and I'm starting to look at them. And yeah, I'm that's, that's my, my goal to get those done. And I've started calling some of the other ones as well. Leaving mess, leaving uh, calls three times. I got to do some more follow-up this evening. And when we get done, make some more calls. But, I love you know, it. Just I just gonna work it, you know. <laughs> well, you got a good tone, man. So I think you're gonna you're gonna do very well here. Just I think the only thing we got to work on is is putting some more time into memorizing that script, yeah. and we're gonna be yeah. set. I'm actually gonna be I'm writing you guys a new script for next week too that you guys can try Perfect. Out practice too. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for all the help. Yeah, Martina course, too. We're all, we're all one family here, so I'm glad Thanks. you joined the call. Keep being on them. Hey, Nairi, Sears, I see you off mute there. I didn't get to you. We'll see if she picks up. Hello. Hey, Nairi, how are you? Doing well, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing awesome. You've been practicing your script? Yes, I have. R running any any uh, roadblocks or anything going on there? Well, um, really, I'm getting to the I'm the medical field underwriter and, and it's like, OK, I'm not interested. I'm getting into I'm getting running into a lot of I'm not interested or I already have it. Okay. Um, yeah, I already have it. Not interested. I mean, you're gonna get that on what? What type of leads are you dialing? Um, I um the CRMs. Um, which ones on the CRM though? You're doing like the the new ones, the nine dollars. You know which ones? I bought the let's see the ones that were the uh one month, one month, three month leads. One month, three month old leads. What happened to your 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 background? You had like this cool background on earlier. Are you eating um, some food or what? <laughs> my my, <ch> <laughs> I have a there I have you a are. Dog. Yeah, and I like he, that better. Yeah, jumping, my child, child, um, he comes in and he jumps on me, that kind of thing. I didn't want him all on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be better if he was. That'd be better. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my Instagram account. Seriously, uh, that's pretty cool. You're in San Francisco <laughs> at the beach, watching the watching the uh, sunset. You know what? What a beautiful right. place to be doing some role play. <laughs> Right. All right. So let's right. let's see. I mean, we're gonna get not interested. We're gonna have people that say they have policies. Um, you know, if they do have a policy, that's I say that's exactly what we're calling. Um, you know, it's two, 2022 and some new rates came out. So that's why I was giving you a call. What do you have in place right now? And then you run the numbers, see if you can beat it. If you can't, you can add on some add on some coverage with some accidentals. Um, the not interested, at least my response to that would be, yeah, that's exactly what I'm calling. So I can get you that information and you can make that decision. So go ahead and grab that pen and paper. Let me know you're ready. Right. So you can kind of sometimes ignore those objections. I know they say not interested to hang up on you. There's not much you can do back. Um, but you can, I, I like to call people back right away. I'm not sure if we got disconnected, but um, yeah. So my job is to get that information to you and then you can make that decision if you're not interested or not. So go ahead and grab that pen and paper and we'll get this out of the way. But a lot of times, it can be our tonality, right? It can be something that that we're saying that's causing that. So that's the whole point of doing some role play and seeing if we can pick apart, make any adjustments. So without further ado, if you're ready, let's hear how you're sounding. All right. 
All right. Okay, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Ryan. Yes. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call from the Benefit Center here in uh, Clayton County. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs. I have your date of birth listed here as 2-21-71. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, let's try it one more time. And this time, let's go, hey, Ryan, this is Nairi giving you a call about this. So just go right into it. We don't need to ask a question, hey, Ryan, because okay. someone, someone that means someone's calling me that, that doesn't know me. And then um, I'm going to be in my defense already. Hey, Ryan. Gotcha. Well, who is hey, this? Hey, Ryan. Oh, career, I'm already hung up on you. All right. <laughs> All right, bring me hello. Hey, Ryan. No question. Oh. All right, hey, bring Ryan. Me hello. What do you mean hey, about? Ryan. No pause. Hey, Ryan. You're just oh. going right into it. Okay. Hey, Ryan. Oh, Lord, keep going. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call from the Benefit Center here in Clayton County. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs. I have All right, a... let's, let's do this. Take out Benefit, Benefit Center in Clayton County. Okay. And just, and just say... You know, hey, Ryan, it's Nairi getting back to you on some information. Let's see if that sounds better. You might be getting hung up on because the benefit center and people are probably asking you what's the benefit center, right? Okay, right. That's true. It sounds I'm a little kidding. bit, sounds to me like a little bit uh, telemarketing on it. I don't know okay. when we say benefit center. Okay. So let's try it without that part. All right, ring me low. Hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance program. I have your date of birth listed here as 2-21-73. Is that correct? Yeah, I like that better. I like that better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's say it, say it one more time, a little bit louder, a little bit faster. Okay. Bring low. Hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state uh, life insurance program. Okay. So what it does sound like, I do think it sounds a little bit telemarketing. Let's see if we can talk in a more monotone uh, voice. I know okay. that's probably not naturally how you talk, but you can get into that maybe later down the script. And uh, so loud, monotone, a little bit faster. And let's see if it okay. sounds a little more like standard protocol. Hi, right, ringing okay. up. Hey, Ryan. Hey. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Okay. That's not hey, monotone. Ryan. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> it's like, hey, Ryan. So just serious, right? Uh, hey, Ryan. Eeyore. All right. Eeyore. All right. All right. Hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested um, on the state life insurance program. All right, pause. All right, monotone, fast, loud, so faster. Okay, faster, okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, Ryan, okay, you're right. Hey, Ryan, hey, this is Nairi returning your call on the information you requested online for the state life insurance program. All right, so you sound a little more confident. All right, one more time, a little bit faster, a little bit louder, a little bit more monotone. Ringing low. Okay. Hey, Ryan, okay, boom, boom, okay. Hey, Ryan, hey, this is Nairi returning your call. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs. All right, take out returning your call. Okay. Hey, Ryan. All right. Hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance program. All right. So a uh, little bit faster and we're getting it. All right. A little bit faster, okay. monotone, monotone. Try not to talk in the, in all those places, and then it's going to naturally bring you down a little bit. So okay. the, flux, the fluctuations is kind of what telemarkers do. Hey, Nairi, okay. this is Ryan. How's your day going? Just getting back to you on the sale we got going on. <laughs> so, versus I'm like, sorry. versus like, if I talk monotone, it's a little more serious. Hey, Nairi, getting back to you on the sale we have going on right now. So it's more serious. It doesn't sound as telemarketing, right? So try to get to our more monotone um, and it's gonna come off a little more serious and more assertive, okay? All right, ring, ring, hello. 
Hey, Ryan. No pause is ringing hello. Hey, Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi returning your call on the. They got return call. All hey, right, Ryan. Hello. Hey, Ryan. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs. Okay. I think you should say who you are. Michael, who is this? Oh, so I'm saying Nairi. Okay. Were people saying who is this to you? I'm actually saying Nairi. I think I just forgot to say it this time. <laughs> but you're, we're getting it. Sounding a lot better already. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh. Ring hello. Hey Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi. Return. Not returning your call. Hey <laughs> Nairi. Hey, I have been practicing that returning your call thing. Hey Ryan. Hey, this is Nairi. I'm just getting back to you on the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs. All right, I'm liking it way better, more serious. Um, yeah, yeah, more assertive. And that's going to probably stop some of those people going, I'm not interested because you okay. think you were coming off a little too fluctuated. And then, okay. and then having a little bit too much words in there that were confusing them. Call them back from the benefit center here. Hey, just return your call about that, you know, life insurance information you requested. I'd probably hang up on myself. <laughs> but <I'm just> like, <laughs> <laughs> getting to the point you know where you're just kind of serious right you know, okay. uh, you know serious and to the point hey right you know hey nairi this is ryan get back to you on some information that you requested on the uh, state license programs here uh you need to verify date of birth here 6 81 we got that right more serious to the point here do my job right and so a lot of times in our perspectives when we're doing this dialing we're nervous to say anything because you know, we're sounding too friendly or when we want something, right? You're nervous, right? It's naturally for natural for us to be nervous when we're dialing like, man, I hope they don't hang up on us. I just spent money on these leads. Man, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope I can make some money, but if, and I hope they don't hang up on me. That perspective automatically is going to make you talk different. So we really have to make sure we're in the right headspace, you know, before we dial. This person requested me to call them. I'm going to call them, get them the information. And if they get a policy, great. If they don't, that's okay. I have lots of people to call. That's a perspective, right? We have to okay. be there, okay? Um, so kind of make sure you're putting yourself, if you got to you know, put on your bulletin board the right perspective, you know, write it down on a sticky note, a couple sticky notes and set it up there and be like, make sure you're in that right perspective. We do not want to be the one that we're scared to call them because that's silly. They ask for us to call them. It's our jobs to give them information. Why, you know, I don't care if they get a plan if, or if they don't. Some people do, some people don't. I'm just doing my job and calling people because they asked me to call them, right? So getting the right perspective. So I hope that helped Nairi because yeah, I can tell the difference. You know, if whoever I can see on camera right now, you know, Keegan, what about you? Did you hear the difference? Yeah, she went from hi, hello, to like more straight boss to the mode, point. right? You were going boss uh, mode after that, Nairi. You can yeah, hear the okay. difference as we adjust. So get into that boss mode. <laughs> what was that, Throw Nairi? Grow away kindergarten and pre-K teacher. <laughs> that, that's right. A lot of teachers come into this and do really well. Yeah. So, you know, hey. we're going to get you there as well. Um, but yeah, more serious monotone practice that stuff and let's get that script to where we're not having to look at it get it memorized and remember guys especially in telesales less is more less is confident so if you're when you're reading your scripts if it's not necessary cut cut it out okay we know that extra stuff if we need to add lip and add it in but cut it out all right we got lauren's lauren's been having her, her hand risen for a while here um go ahead lauren All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? All right. What, what are we doing? Question? Or are we doing role play? Um, no, I want to do role play. Alan's been yelling at me to get my hand up. So. All right. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Let's do some role play here. Um, and then how many times have you read your script out loud? Uh, countless. <laughs> countless amount of times. I don't know how many. At, at least 50 so to 100 so trying to get your master's degree i like it okay yeah all right all right lauren let's hear it ring ring hello hi ryan this is lauren i'm getting back to you on some of that information you requested about the okay, pennsylvania pause. state like we gotta pause 
So I can already tell it doesn't sound like you because we were just talking. It's too, I get like a sales voice. I don't know why, like a <laughs> customer good. service voice. It, my get, sister does the same thing. We get yeah. like, hi. <laughs> yeah, it's getting way too high, right? <sighs> So remember, right. we, we got to talk like ourselves. We got to relax, be ourselves. You're, you, you know, just, just no, no, overly friendly. Not like, hey, Lauren, hey, us, uh, Ryan, get back to you on some information you asked for. That's way too high, right? You can hear the neediness in it. Okay, we don't mm -hmm. need anything because we don't need anything. This, this job is just a numbers job, and we have to have the perspective that some people we can help. Some people we can't, but I know if I just keep working it, I'm going to find the people I can, and that's how we make money. So don't worry about the no's. Don't worry about the yeses. Just worry about calling people and getting them information. All right. Okay. That's our perspective. You're just calling someone, getting some information. They asked for you to call them, so it's not really weird <laughs> that you're calling them, right? <laughs> All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan. This is Lauren. I'm just getting back to you on some of that information you requested online about Pennsylvania state life insurance programs. All right, good. So, so at least we got rid of the high voice. But now yep, it sounds, toned it down now, a little. Now it sounds like we, we toned it down too much. <laughs> now, it sounds like, it sounds like now we're just sitting in the sitting in the, on the couch. And uh, watching a movie and just having like, hey, I just started calling you in the middle of a movie <sighs> right there. <laughs> okay, so. So now we're going to find the difference between the two. So Happy we're raise, medium. Raise, raise our voice. We're in charge. We're assertive. We're doing our job. We're getting through it quick. Okay. So the happy medium between the two. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Lauren. I'm just getting back to you. Some of that information right, you require. Pause. We're going to raise our voice a little bit. Like we're shouting. Like shouting. Like, like you just did. Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay. Because it's going to make you sound more assertive. Okay. All right. Tr trust me on it. All right. Shouting. Ringing hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Lauren. I'm calling to get you some of that information you requested online about those Pennsylvania state life insurance programs. Perfect. Start again. Do it again. Ringing hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Lauren calling to get some information to you about the information you requested online about the Pennsylvania state life insurance programs. All right, let's stop saying hi, Ryan, like that. Let's try to say it a little more sharp. So I can say, I could say, uh, hi, Lauren, it's Ryan. I'm calling about the more traction. Hi, Lauren, it's Ryan, get calling you, right? Some more okay. shorter. Don't let it trail off in a friendly way. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan, this is Lauren. Getting back to you on some information you requested on online about the Pennsylvania State Life Insurance Programs. Better. That sounded good. A lot more sort of assertive and serious. That was great. Okay, let's try it one more time. Ring hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Lauren. I'm getting back to you. Some of that information you requested online about Pennsylvania State Life Insurance Programs. Good. Okay. You're sound. You're getting it. We're getting the night tone yeah. now. You sound more. It's assertive. finding that like middle. Yeah, just more assertive. You know, just standard protocol. You know, the person that goes like, you know, hi, Lauren. You know, like, hey, Lauren, you know, like that is someone that's like kind of needy versus like, hey, Lauren, try and get back to you on some information you requested, right? So standard protocol, getting through it. All right, let's continue through that script. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan, this is Lauren. Getting oh, you did it again. You missed it. Oh, did I really? Confident, it, Ryan. Like, Ryan, oh. Ryan, dang. Tough what? on me. Sharp. Nice and sharp. Nice and sharp and short. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Lauren. I'm just getting back to you on some information you requested about Pennsylvania late state life insurance programs. What I have your date of birth. Yeah. So no pause there. Like, do I pause Zero. there or no? No, no, no. Zero never, pause. Never any pauses. Any pauses that opens up for rebuttals. Okay. So we never right. stop stop talking until we ask a question. Because every time okay. we stop stop. When we stop, we're like, is it okay if I keep talking? Um, do you want to say like, um, yeah. <laughs> it, kind of, it comes off like uh, kind of salesy a little bit or needy, right? So we're, we're never, right. we're just we're in control. We just keep talking until we ask a question. All right, ring hello. Hi, Ryan. 
This is Lauren getting back to you on the information you requested online about the Pennsylvania State Life Insurance Programs. I have your date of birth listed here as 227-1967. Is that correct? Okay, so maybe we lost it. So we got to remember we'll do shouting. Try to okay. shout it. That one sounded like super, uh, super confident, assertive. So shout it super. out. Confident and assertive. That one line we had was really good. And I think you kind of mentally in your head Lost it. quiet it down okay. so mentally remember we're shouting it out shouting it out shouting out like a boss mode all right ring it low hi ryan this is lauren getting back to you on some information you requested online about the pennsylvania state life insurance programs i have your date of birth listed here as 227 1967 do we have that right we have that right Okay, so I was just calling to let you know that we have processed the request and we are doing everything virtually now. So it's only gonna take about 10 minutes. Go ahead, grab a pen and paper for me and we'll get this out of the way. Excellent job, excellent job. So you, for you, when you're dialing, you gotta remember what Ryan said. I gotta shout it out, I gotta shout it out because mentally that's gonna put you in that more confident state where you actually are sounding assertive and just doing your job. So that was excellent. Um, have you dialed anything yet? Nope, buying my first leads hopefully this weekend. All right, have you got your script memorized yet? Are you still using it as a, as a pacifier? I'm getting close, I'm getting, getting close. close. Like okay. I can do most of it and certain parts I kind of have to like peek back, but. Okay, so homework assignment tonight, let's write on a piece of paper, same thing, that outline. And let's see if we can say it with our shouting out voice and get through it, okay? And remember when we get to that part about the driver's license social bank account, say it quick, cut out anything that's not necessary, okay? Short and sweet, okay. Yep. Lauren, good job, man. I'm excited to have you on the team. Any Thank other, you. Any other questions you have for me? No, I'm just super excited to be here. <laughs> and we're excited to have you. Man, we're all one family here, so. All right, let's jump in with Martina. Martina, you there? She's not there. She's working. Okay, she got a handshake. Damien, how you doing, my man? I think he's actually working. Who are you talking to? Yeah, I'm right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> look, you look beautiful. You getting ready? You going on a date or what? Well, thank you. Yeah. Yes, I was just accused yesterday, or no, this morning, that I look like Allison Jenny. Allison Jenny, I'm not familiar. Other people are. Younger people are. <laughs> I'm bad with names, but anyway, Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. As you've been listening in, remember Martina is a top producer. i uh, been on my team for a while. She manages. Well, now you're team. making it sound like it'll be perfect. Well, we're not, I'm not listening to what you have to say. I was just, I was just oh. doing over oh, you. Okay. You've been listening in and I should be calling on you more because you are a leader. Any opinions on some stuff that's been going on so far? Or any tips you well, I me? think the direction that you're giving everybody is getting better every single time and the last the one that you didn't like i was like i like that so i guess it's a matter of opinion. oh you did <laughs> I like, was like that? i would have listened to her but you know it's it's here or there i mean sometimes i'm on the phone i mess up and it ends up being a great call so you know at, and then other times i think i nailed it and moving on yeah and that's okay to mess up i mean i mess up all the time correct myself because that's naturally how we talk you know we do naturally make mistakes and then we correct ourselves and that stuff's fine um any any other tips that i know that you know you're more of a freestyler versus a script reader but any tips for everybody on the call well um even still a year in um, I get nervous. I still get nervous. Some days I'm like, okay, I'm sitting down, I'm dialing, I'm making appointments. And then other times I'll be really cool, like solid for an hour. And then for some reason, my brain gets a little weird. So just know that's normal for everybody. It doesn't matter if you've been doing it 10 years or two minutes. Um, so just know you are not alone. I know um, for me personally, I go, I have go-tos to get my brain out of that because I can take myself down really quick. I can talk myself out of dialing. I can talk myself into, um, running to the, to the store for something really quick. Um, so here's I can procrastinate quick, really well. 
I'm really glad you brought that up because here's some quick tips. Okay. So when, when we're nervous to dial, the key to is, is having a schedule to when you start, right? So if you don't have a schedule, we don't have a plan. There's no destination to where we're going. So make sure you write out your schedule of when you're going to start dialing. And then if you're feeling nervous, number one, it's, it's a perspective thing. So you got to tell yourself, what am I nervous about? I'm being silly. I'm actually supposed to find no's. I'm supposed to find yeses. I'm just calling people, give them information and change the perspective of why you're looking at it. So just tell yourself, I'm kind of being silly right now. These guys asked me to call them. I know I'm going to get no's. I know I'm going to get some yeses. And I'm just going to go through these things and try to help people and get them the information they ask for, right? So try to change your perspective and tell, ask yourself, why am I being nervous? Because most of the time it's like, oh, I'm afraid to get some no's. You know, I'm afraid to get hung up on you know, um, all these things. And, and you got to tell yourself, oh yeah, it's actually part of it and that's normal and that's okay. And these guys are the, I'm not cold calling anyone. So just kind of re, try to redirect your thoughts. And then um, the second tip I'd say is if you're feeling nervous, just say, hey, you know, I can take a break once I talk to five people, right? Because mm -hmm. once you talk to five people, naturally it changes your perspective to go, oh my God, all that stuff I was freaking out about was silly. Right. Because yeah, and I think everybody that that improved, everybody improved, period. And um, the best thing to do right now when you get off is to do that for 15 more minutes. Yeah, because you just changed it. Yeah, you, you just made that change. Like now make it more concrete. You did it once right on. Now do it 10, 15, 20 more times the same right. way. Yep. And if you guys, you guys think you sound great, go ahead and listen to yourself first. And once you have a good recording, go ahead and send it to me and I'll, I'll analyze it and tell you if there's anything we should make adjustments on. Damien, let's say what's up to you before I end this call. Hey, what's up? How you doing, man? Ran into you at conference, man. What'd you learn from conference? A lot. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, I don't even know where to begin, but basically just, I learned that my schedule wasn't as good as I thought it was, and I wasn't as consistent as I thought I was. So I've been making adjustments. Nice, man. And last time we were on role play, we worked through your script. Um, do you take a lot of that, that and, and apply it? And do you see any different results? Oh, yeah. No, I was, I was actually on a call. I just put it in the chat. So I was on a call um, while, while we're on here. And I got through the whole thing. And basically, the guy was in pretty good shape, like his policy um was actually a better premium amount than what i had pulled up for him but um so he had one on his he wanted mortgage protection and he already had mortgage protection but he was kind of wanting to see if he could get a better rate and so then i was kind of thrown off but i was just talking about it with christian and i think i'm going to call him back tomorrow and see if he's heard of iul because He's pretty young and he doesn't have like any savings or 401k or anything like that. Okay. Well, did you, did you get, did you, if you, how many years ago to get mortgage protection? Well, so it was in September. So it was new. Okay. Well then good. So you might be able to replace it. Do you know which company it was with? Um, so that's, that's the part that I didn't get. I got like everything else except for the actual company. So I needed to dig deeper, okay. but. Okay. Um, well, yeah. yeah. Did you run, did you run the numbers? Were you able to beat it at all or no? Um, well, so I ran it with Americo on the term and it was like a dollar difference. So it's essentially the same thing that he's already paying. So yeah, tr try with like American Amicable Home Protector. That one's pretty cost effective. Um, it's an okay. easy e app too. So a lot of times we can beat it. Um, American Amicable does have a product, but um, it can be, but pays really low commission. So I don't want any new people writing it. Um, but you can always also add on coverage. You know, if you can't beat it, go, hey, you know, it looks like here, I'm not sure if they told you last time, but you actually qualify for a half a million dollar policy and it's, uh, it's only like 40 bucks. So you can always run the numbers on Mutual Walmart and add coverage. Um, the okay. IUL can be a great product. So you can go on YouTube and just search. It's called the Mutual of Omaha IUL Express. I-U-L-E. I-U-L-E is what it's called. Mutual of Omaha. So you guys can do some research on that. The nice thing about it is simple issued. So you can sell it over the phone versus most IULs require illustrations and be signed by the client. So that's a really great product. But you guys can do some okay. YouTube research on that.
All right. Um, so thank you for joining us, Damian, man. I'm glad to see you at conference and keep hustling. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Amy real quick, and then we're going to end the call. Amy, how you doing? Oh, can't hear you. Amy, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. How's dialing going? I'm getting ready to dial. <laughs> getting ready to dial? My, okay. my first round of dialing um, the very old, uh, I guess, life insurance internet leave, you know, the, the dollar fifty ones didn't go very well. Yeah, I don't recommend those ones. <laughs> yeah. Like said, the ones I recommend are the $11 ones, the new ones, or the one month old ones. Okay. So, so now, now I have mortgage protection ones. Yeah, actually, are... yeah. Any age mortgage protection ones are awesome. I think those are probably the best value ones, honestly, on there. Um, that's why I started with, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, if you can buy those, scoop them up. Now, the nice thing about us being remote guys is that mortgage protection mailers aren't available everywhere if you want to go local. But if you're in the CRM and you're looking at all the states and you find a state that has a ton of uh, mortgage protection, uh, age mortgage protection, buy that state and buy those leads. Those are excellent leads or discounts. The same lead I buy for the 60 bucks, but how much are they in the CRM? Oh, they're... 11 11 nine or 11 dollars yeah yeah so those are excellent leads and i think they go down even after three months so yeah. you know excellent buys right there so i'm glad you got those take advantage of any discounts today you get 37 percent off right yeah so yeah. take some of those too cool amy well hey pleasure to see you um hey guys any final questions before we end this call yeah all uh, right i have a quick question yeah go ahead yeah, so um, so me and Damien have been doing the, the telesales. Um, so look, right now we're trying to figure out what would be the best times, right? As in like, if we were on a schedule, right? So what we were doing, we were doing. You broke up there. But I'll answer your question. Um, best times to call is every time, all times. <laughs> okay, so from seven o'clock. That's what I told morning. him. Yeah, seven o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. Now, obviously, the prime times are going to be seven to 10 a.m. And then probably from five to nine, right? Because that's when most people are home. But anytime's a good time to dial, literally seven days a week. You just never know. The key is if you can start early in the morning and start ringing them and then ring them every couple hours again and again and again for two hours, they're going to have so many you know, of your same number, you're either going to get a call back or eventually they're going to answer the phone. Um, so that's yeah. the best way to get a hold of them. It's just a lot of people, what they do is they're like, well, I call them three times once, you know, this today, and now I'm afraid to ruin the lead. Um, so I don't want to call them anymore. Well, you're not going to get anyone to answer that way. So every two I hours. I get a lot of callbacks too, doing voicemails. <clears throat> you have been? Yeah. Nice. Okay. What's your voicemail say? I just say, hey, Ryan, it's Damien getting back with you. Give me a shot when you get this nice i like it that's a good tip yeah. guys yeah give me a shout back when you get this i like that so nice it sounds work. like they know me and yeah. actually a lady did call back and she's like trying to talk to me she's like wait a second like do i know you like <laughs> i just went right into the script so <laughs> that's a good tip i like that damien another one that i used to use a lot was um you know, just being honest with them. Hey, it's Ryan. I've uh, been trying to reach you. That's why we see so many calls. Um, do I have to talk to you for about a minute today? This is about the information requested on the life insurance. Um, I will call you back in two hours. I'm pretty busy and tied up. But when you see that number come up, it's not a telemarketer. And I do have to keep calling you to get this information. Again, a one minute call. And uh, just look for the same exact number in about two hours and answer. We'll get you off the phone in a minute. Thanks so much. A lot of times I won't call you back. But if you let them know who you are, because a lot of people see a message left, check their voicemail. Now they see it again, like, oh, okay, that's about that stuff I asked for, right? So you're just kind of letting me know what it's about. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you in the next Roy Play call.